So if you've been here for any uh, length of time, you know that I've been using Lightroom a bit uh, more recently after uh, taking a hiatus from Lightroom for a number of years, actually. Uh, and each time I go into Lightroom and edit photos, I basically convince myself that I'm not using Lightroom enough because it's got some amazing capabilities, amazing masking, amazing color control and light control, and all kinds of powerful things that I love using, just great, great tools. So I'm gonna take a photo today and do part of an edit and talk about how I'm using it and kind of what things I'm using and, and kind of why and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna start with this photo here. This is from a set of brackets. Uh, I was firing into lower light in Colorado last fall uh, at sunset, of course. So this is obviously a darker exposure. I don't always shoot that dark, although I tend to shoot a little bit darker to protect the highlights. But this is one of the uh, images from a set of brackets, but I took it as a single exposure to edit. And with some work in Lightroom, I turned it into that, which is quite a bit more like what I saw. Not entirely. I do take some creative liberties, especially around a little bit of color in the trees. But I want to walk through and show you how I'm using the different tools in Lightroom to go from something like that to something like that. So let me jump into the reset and get that going. Okay, so this is my current state. That's why I said this isn't going to be a full edit, but I want to show you some of the powerful things that you can do. I did take out a couple of distracting elements and I, I did crop it and straighten it a little bit. You can see here in the develop uh, section basic, I did some basic stuff, right? You can see a little bit of a exposure uh, increase, of course, because it was very dark, highlights, shadows, that sort of thing, a tiny bit of vibrance, not a whole lot. Then I went into color grading and I went into each of the different tonal areas. So if you haven't used this tool, it's incredibly powerful. It's essentially an upgrade from what used to be called split toning which had the highlights and the shadows, but this has shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. So you can get all three and play with the hue and the saturation of luminance uh, in all three of those. And so that allowed me to make some color adjustments, taking me from that where it's a bit greener overall to that, which has added a little bit more of that uh, brown, kind of reddish, uh, more fall look to the colors. So if you'd like some video, I'm gonna ask this a few times during this video, but if you'd like a video about color grading, let me know. I've done some in the past, but I'm happy to go back uh, and go through it. And then you use calibration, which I absolutely love calibration. If you look at the before, that's what the colors look like. And then after a little bit of work in calibration, you can see that they have really come up quite a bit. And that is just some basic slider movements. There it is before and after. If you want to check out calibration, I did a video about it there. Uh, but if you saw the final result a moment ago, which I guess you did if you're still watching the video and you started at the beginning, then uh, you can see that that one is quite a bit different than this result. And so that's because I did a lot of masking. Masking is incredibly just powerful and amazing in Lightroom, but also just in any photo editor. It's a critical skill to really allow you to control what you're doing to your photo. It is all about being selective or local or targeted. All these words are kind of similar in terms of what I mean by them, which is I can go apply whatever edit I want to apply only to certain parts of the photo. And that is how you overhaul, adjust, change, and really make impactful photos and create the look that you want. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So the first thing I want to do is go in, I'm going to open the masking panel, and I'm going to get a linear gradient. So pretty simple and straightforward. And by the way, I use linear gradients all the time. They're powerful. I use several of them in this video and on this image, but I just wanted to come in here and drop a linear gradient. And I'm going to do something maybe about like that. And all I'm going to do is slightly bump up the exposure just because it's a little bit dark, especially in that kind of foreground of the section that I selected. So like if you if the selection that I made, it stops at this top line, which it does, because that's how a linear gradient works. Kind of that center section is where I want a lot more of the brightness. In fact, I might pull this down a little bit. So I want something more like that. And I'm gonna go into texture and add a little bit of texture too, just simply because I wanna bring that up and just create a little bit more of that kind of, um, well, texture, I guess is the word, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of structure in that part of the photo. And that's because for me, as I'm looking at a landscape, stuff that's closer i expect to see more detail and kind of texture and structure in my eyes can see it better versus way in the distance human eyes we can't zoom 
right? So um, we're not going to notice it as much in the distance. So it makes sense to me to have it a little bit more textured uh, up front, if you will. Uh, now that I did that, I'm going to go ahead and create another mask. And this time, I'm going to get a linear gradient one more time. But this time, I'm going to actually use this in the sky. And I, I often do that, even though you can create a mask automatically for the sky. I sometimes like to use linear gradients instead, simply because it is a gradient. You have this nice gradient zone, which I like to use uh, quite a bit as well. So what I want to do here is slightly darken the sky. So maybe about like that. I'm going to pull the highlights down just a little bit. So all I'm doing is pulling back a little bit of the brightness in that sky. The temperature and tint are actually going to go up a little bit. So I want it to be a little bit warmer. It was a beautiful sunset. I uh, I was there with some friends that I uh, happened to run into. Uh, I knew them already, and it just so happened that we were in the same place. Yeah, this is kind of near Telluride, in the same place in Colorado at the same time. And so anyway, I saw on social media they were nearby. I pinged them. And we met up. I was just up there by myself, uh, but it was, a, it was a lot of fun. I had a great, great time. Uh, now I'm going to take texture down simply because I'm kind of removing the, uh, the detail from the sky. I just like a little bit smoother skies. So I'm pulling texture and detail down and just softening up that sky is all I'm doing. Okay, now I want to get into a little bit more targeted a couple of other areas. So I'm going to go and get a brush mask. And one of the cool things about uh, the brush mask is this feature right here called auto mask. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to right bracket key to make my uh, brush bigger. And I'm going to come in and all I want to do is get this kind of this center section. I don't want that foreground that's brown that I brightened earlier. I don't really want any of that selected. I just want some of this uh, tree and some of the, uh, the areas around it. I want to select these and auto mask will help me do a pretty good job of getting along those edges and keeping it pretty clean. I'm going to go in and add some contrast. I am going to create a bit more of a focal point in that area because it's a very, uh, I think, uh, key part of the, the photo. And it's, it's a part that I like quite a bit uh, because it's got a lot of color in it with the trees. And it's going to have more here when I show you uh, some of these other things. But um, there we go. I've done that. And so if you look at the before and after so far in that section, a little bit duller right and a little bit less contrasty and now a bit more contrast a bit more warmth that's all i've done but for me one of the great things about masks is being able to use point color point color is amazing absolutely love it i, uh, I use it on probably about every photo video about it there but if you want to see more and how i'm using it i'm happy to do that and what it does it allows you to go sample colors and then go make further refinements to them you can use this to make targeted color adjustments versus what it did earlier with color grading and with color calibration, it applied globally. So these are targeted and I just, I love that. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab these orange trees. And what I want to do, you can see it identifies the color already. And what I want to do is I'm going to bump up a little bit of the saturation just to make them a little bit more intense and a little bit of the luminance as well, just to make them a little bit brighter. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go and grab some more color. So in this case, I end up grabbing something kind of like this olive green kind of color. So maybe about like that. Oh, and you notice it says can't sample a color here. Choose a brighter area. So I'm going to choose a little brighter green. How about that one? That didn't work either. So we'll go to this green. And there we go. That one worked. Sometimes you run into that and you just keep experimenting. Uh, in this case, all I'm trying to do is take those greens and I want to make them a little bit warmer. So I'm actually going to shift that hue kind of left. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take the saturation and the luminance and go a little bit higher. So again, just creating a little bit more of that fall look and that fall color here in this area. And I want to get one more uh, point color sample. Okay, I got this one that's a little bit more in the brown. And I'm going to take that hue slightly left. Uh, and then I'm going to take the saturation slightly higher. Again, just creating a little bit more of a fall look by adjusting the colors and getting some of those to pop. And now that I've done that, if you look at the before and after, there's my before using that point color in that center tree line area. And there it is after. You can see it's a pretty massive increase in the uh, kind of the fall look. Now, having done that, I'm going to go in and do some more things. I'm going to get another linear gradient. And I uh, one of the things I realized was I think it's a little too bright down here. So I'm going to take this linear gradient and I'm going to kind of fade that into the photo. And all I want to do is darken this area a little bit. I do realize that at the beginning of this video, I slightly brightened the foreground. That was also to add some texture, but I feel like it's a little bit too bright in this little corner. It's a little bit distracting. I kind of want the viewer's eye to follow the line of the road 
and that brighter corner uh, doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to come in here with the exposure slider and slightly darken that just to kind of take the uh, attention it may get away from the viewer's eye. Just because brighter stuff attracts the eye, as does uh, things that are more colorful. So not a ton of color there, but I definitely want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm actually going to get another linear gradient. And this time, I'm actually going to do a very similar area. I've already done two linear gradients in the foreground, and I'm about to do a third. And that's because I came back, and this is part of my process. Uh, it might seem a little uh, chaotic or haphazard, but what happens is I'll go in and edit, and then I'll realize that I need to go back and do something. And you can go back to previous uh, masks and make adjustments to them. But in each of these linear gradients in the foreground, I'm slightly changing where the mask is. So for me, it's easier just to go in and make a new mask because uh, this one is going to be really just that foreground area, which includes the path. And what I want to do here is I want to take the temperature and the tint. I want to take the temperature slightly down, and I'm also going to take this tint slightly down as well, a little bit more toward the green. Uh, I'm kind of cooling that off, and that's going to be a little bit of a counterpoint to the... Uh, like the warmth that's in the trees and in the sky. So again, I'm just trying to control color in different areas with different masks and different tools. Now, having done that, I'm going to also get some uh, point color here. I'm going to click on that, and I want to sample these kind of browner tones. So maybe about like that. You can see it's uh, the swatch here kind of shows you. By the way, you can right-click on that and delete it or delete multiple swatches if you want to. But what I want to do here is take the hue slightly left. I want to go a little bit warmer there. And if you notice, there's more of that kind of in the uh, higher end of this mask, which ends right up here. There's more of that browner stuff up there, and there's more of the green in the bottom. So again, I'm trying to go from kind of cooler to warmer to warmest kind of in the sky. But I took that hue down. I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit but I'm gonna bring the luminance slightly up. And now that I've done that, I'm also gonna do a similar move in the green. So I'm gonna grab a sample point color again. I'm gonna grab that green right there, and I'm gonna take the hue slightly up. In other words, make it a little bit more green. And I'm gonna take the luminance down just to make it a little bit darker. And that also kind of helps frame it a little bit more, kind of complementary to what I did with the linear gradient in the bottom where I kind of darkened the bottom. Because there's more of that green in the very bottom, I'm just adding a little bit more darkening to it. It's a little bit like a dodge and burn uh, based on color, if you will. I'm basically kind of burning that color, making it darker. Okay, now I want to add a mask to target those mountains to bring them uh, a little bit, um, bring a little bit better visibility into them. I'm going to use a brush mask for that, and that's where Auto Mask comes in really handy. It does a great job of keeping the edges under control. So as I paint along these edges. I don't have a lot of bleeding into the sky, which is uh, super useful in a situation like this where I'm just trying to control my mask and target that area specifically. So a little, little bit of brushing, I have that, and I think that looks nice. And what I want to do is come in and I want to increase the exposure a little bit because there's not enough visibility into those mountains and brightening them will help. I'm also going to take the whites up slightly because there is some snow on those peaks and I want to bring those whites up just to make them a little bit more visible. I'm going to check a temperature increase, maybe something a little bit there to pick up some of the light or the sunlight from the sunset. Maybe not that much because uh, I don't want to overcome the white with too much yellow, but maybe a six or something like that. Maybe that'll work. Uh, and then I want to add a little bit of texture and clarity as well, which are down here in effects. So a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity just to give them a little bit of crunch. Even though they're pretty distant, I still want to kind of sharpen them up a little bit, and that's what that's doing for me. So having done that, I want to go do a couple of more masks. And this is what I'm talking about. You kind of iterate and you stack and you do new things and target different areas. And that's what's so powerful about all these different masking types. They just give you the ability to really take a lot of control over your image and get the result that you want, which, of course, is what we're going for. And this time, I'm going to use one of my old favorites, a luminance range or a luminosity mask. And the area that I'm going to target is right over here, kind of that darker section. And you can see it's it's isolated, everything that's kind of in that tonal area. Now, you can come in here and make further refinements to it if you like to. And I've done this in future videos, but if you'd like to see more luminance uh, range mask videos, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. All right. Actually, I did make a minor adjustment to the uh, the luminance range itself. So I've kind of fixed that a little bit. And what I want to do is just come in here and slightly bump the exposure. It just feels like it was a little bit too dark in the foreground. 
going to add a little bit of contrast, which is going to create a little bit more difference between the brighter parts and the darker parts. And then I'm going to take the temperature slightly down and the tint slightly up. Just playing a little bit with the tones there to get it to feel uh, the, or look like it goes together a little bit better. I'm trying to tie all this together, essentially. So just playing around with masks, playing around with the different settings. And of course, luminance range masks are just so great at helping you target certain tonal areas. Uh, it's just fabulous. It's a great, uh, great masking tool that I love. Uh, and then I really just have one more mask. And in this case, it's actually going to be a color range mask. So I'm using just about everything that there is. And what I'm going to do is come in and target this color range. So I pick that and all I want to do is slightly darken that color range. And again, it's just kind of playing with contrast a little bit. A lot of these are minor little things, but when you add them all up, they really end up creating a much, much different photo based on all the different targeted things that I've done. Luminance masks, uh, color range masks, linear gradients, brush masks, all those kind of things put together really stack up and add up to a finished photo. So speaking of finished photos, that's effectively where I am. This was a combination of moves in the basic panel, some color grading and calibration, all of which is done globally, but then eight different masks that were targeted to certain areas with certain moves that really allowed me to take it from a basic photo that was completely dark, if you recall, to now something that's essentially uh, vibrant in the right areas, targeted with light and color in specific areas, detail added in specific areas. That's really the power of masking. And that's why every time I open up Lightroom and start using it and use these different masks, I'm always kind of like, dang, I'm just not using this enough. So I'll, I'll keep coming back and making more videos about it. If you have certain topics you want me to cover, let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with more videos. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you soon. And until next time, adios.